This video and its content has been rated G for general audiences, explored by LumiFusion, published to YouTube, and has been given the annual support from viewers like you. No! Well now, it looks like Halloween is getting closer and closer by the minute. And while the children stay up all night eating candy, the light of day begins to decay. Now on to the story. It was an autumn evening on the island of Sodor, and the engines at Timmy's Sheds were chilling and talking about their days, as well as sharing scary stories. And that's when I learned that everyone has a story to tell, even if it's about their worst moments. Cool! So, did you know Humans are all animals too? Interesting. Okay, this doesn't make any sense. Where's the climate? You didn't have any ghosts! It's creepy in a dark forest, you know. I assume you have a better story? Hmm? I actually do. <clears throat> the Fandom Express! <laughs> you literally scared the Earl nearly a decade ago. My story might nearly be 20 years old, but at least it's better than yours. Well, if that's the case, let's see what we've got here. Very well. My story is the one-eyed Lori. The what? Don't worry, Percy. I accidentally scared the dump truck twins, but was there when you and the pack told about it once, as well as the old iron bridge. Oh God! I better calculate how long this is going to be. Well, at least I don't smell like tar. A lot of boring math later. Now. The reason I know this is because one time, when I was at the wharf, Rusty told me about what Duncan went through nearly 25 years ago. At least I don't listen to those toy engines. I'd rather have you listening to me and the Fandom Express. The Old Iron Bridge. The One-Eyed Lori. The Camp Rangers. The Cursed Kiss. Huh? It was Adam. They just put some trucks into place within the goods yard. You guys, that was the devil's your best role model. I just recovered from an engine failure at Diesel Works, and I don't need you guys making me even more stressed! <sighs> Sorry. I guess I'm a little freaked out by an old tale about the woman. The woman? Do tell us about it. With great pleasure, but make sure your axles don't get attacked. Anyways. <clears throat> A long time ago, on this island. The story takes place on the island of Sodor in 1722, 300 years from now, when the incident happened. Before it had any railways, the island of Sodor was a countryside place with a few prairies, and there was a young couple who lived in one of them, named Karen and Darren Harrison. Darren was a police officer who worked in the county, and Karen was a stay-at-home wife, who looked after everything that needed to be done for the both of them. They didn't have kids, but instead, a therapist would occasionally help them out, as their jobs were sometimes very stressful, and they would barely get any time with each other. But no matter what, they enjoyed the world they were in, and lived happily together for many years. Unfortunately, as time went on, and as Karen got older, she started to become ill, and went mentally insane. She began doing all sorts of things that not only ruined many people's lives, but also nearly ruined the island. The things she did were unspeakable and extremely horrible, and she committed the biggest crimes in British history. She would get in trouble many times with the police, but things didn't get any better. And eventually, the entire island had had enough of her presence. So they decided to execute her. The engines were horrified, but let Adam continue anyway. One afternoon, the police took her to, not a cell, but instead, a deserted basement in the undergrounds of the police station. They cuffed her up to a chair and left her there until midnight, where Darren, CEO of the police department and her husband was going to execute her by forcing her to drink poison! He emotionally agreed to this, as he was the most horrified, angry, disgusted, and depressed by her so-called actions. So at 11.59am, he came up to her with the poison, but before he could give it to her, Karen spoke up. Listen honey, before you do anything, I want to apologize for everything I've done. Things were getting stressful in my final years, and I thought that I'd do horrible things to people to show them just how I felt, and worse. 
It was a very horrible and idiotic thing to do, and I have lost my reason to live and breathe anymore. But all I want most in this world right now is to apologize to you, my favorite husband and friend from high school. I know what I did was terrifying and cruel, but I just want you to know that I regret it and take everything back. Now, before I die, I need you to do me a favor and give me one last kiss while I swallow the poison. I love you, Darren, and I'm glad we have known each other for 30 years. Well, Darren didn't know what to say, but he decided to forgive her anyways. And so, he gave her the poison, and they kissed each other one last time. But then, something happened. Instead of swallowing the poison, Karen spat out right into her husband's mouth. Darren was so caught off guard by this, he accidentally swallowed some before passing out while vomiting, dead. Karen looked at the corpse and was laughing <laughs> evilly, harder than she ever had before. But she had been too much of an idiot to realize that there was one security camera in there. The security officer nearly had a heart attack, but did not hesitate to call for backup. The SWAT team got their munitions ready, went inside, and then... She passed away. No one on the island likes to talk about it much, but to this day, it is very debatable whether she didn't mean her apology or if she was just trying to save herself, or both. And whenever the tale was told for the rest of the century, from October 1 to 31, when people were asleep, they could have sworn they heard some faint witch laughing that haunted them all month long. So, did I win your little so-called competition? Mm -hmm. All the engines stayed quiet, but Adam already knew the answer as he left without another word. Well, that really got us there. Indeed, but we should probably stop arguing now, especially if it's about things that don't even relate to people's fates. Not exactly, but one of my old drivers a couple decades ago told me about a scary ghost engine who fell off a viaduct on the mainland. I even pranked Thomas after the incident with flour. Want to tell them, Thomas? Uh, I'd love to, but I'm going to go to Netford to sleep there. Why? Well, Adam will probably spend the night there, and even though he's been there before, it still might be unusual, especially at this time of year. Good night! Um, bye? <sighs> so, tell me more about this engine, Percy. Well, they say there used to be an E2 tank engine named Timothy who worked on the island of Sodor before falling off a damaged viaduct after his brakes failed, that is. Many years ago, I thought Thomas would be interested since he's an E2 as well, but I kind of ruined it by telling him in an annoying way. E2? Wait, do you think? No. I mean, it could be possible. <laughs> it's getting late, and I'm tired. We'll worry about it tomorrow. Fortunately, the story that Adam told the steam team was 100% false. But as for the E2 tank engine, well, that's another story. 